angels willing to hold us in their arms When our words of stone or ashes And we both pass on Let forever mean forever and carry on Good afternoon. So we're here again today. We need to have a talk about this, and we've talked about it before, but I think we need to keep talking about it until it becomes a realization, because apparently it's not. So... We're going to have a discussion about what's going on in society, what's causing people to snap, and how to put a stop to it. The answer is not one that's handed down to us by our cheerleaders on the right or the left. In fact, the answer is not something they're even willing to discuss either side. So, before we get into it, let me run through my normal spiel stuff real quick and get that out of the way. And then uh, we'll get the ball rolling on this. I hope that I can do this subject justice. I really do. Um, So let me uh, pull this window over here. Okay, I'll try not to take too long with it. Uh, Let's see. Our Amazon affiliate, we are at 20 cents. Yay! (laughs) We always start out like this at the beginning of the month. Um, I'm showing three three items haven't shipped yet, so those amounts, uh, whatever it is, will be added to it yet. Uh, So, and I do, I truly appreciate those that participate in this program. Again, last month we made it to $87 and some odd cents. I can't remember how many cents. Um, But that is is incredible, incredible. And that's thanks to you guys. Thanks to you guys. It helps us like you wouldn't believe. It truly does. And, you know, I am looking forward not only to be able to better prep, Jen and I, but, you know, also be able to show you, again, products that you don't have to break the bank on, but yet you can rely on when the time, when the time comes. And unfortunately, um, as each day passes, I see those times are coming. I truly do. Um, So anyway, I want to thank everybody that participates in our Amazon affiliate program. For those that don't know, in the description of the video or on the home page of thewatchmannews.com, we have an Amazon affiliate link. When you click that, it just takes you to Amazon, and you put in what item you're looking for, and you, uh, when you purchase the item, it doesn't cost you anything more, but it throws a little bit our way. And every little bit adds up, as you can tell, and it's amazing. It's incredible, and I thank you all for participating in that. We also have an Amazon store set up, and uh, if you click that link, either in the description of the video or on our homepage, it will take you to our Amazon store, and I am constantly adding stuff to this. In fact, I was adding stuff again today. I added a ton of stuff yesterday, and I will continue to keep not only adding items to the current categories, but I will also you know, continue to add categories and uh, these are all items that I recommend that I think are a good product and I think they're a good deal on a good product. So anyway, I want to thank you all for participating in that. That is, uh, that is awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, one more thing. If you don't shop Amazon but you want to help us out, we have a method for that as well. Uh, if you go to thewatchmannews.com on our home page, we have a donate button in the menu. So you click on that, it just takes you to our PayPal donation page. You don't have to have a credit or a debit card. I mean, 
You don't have to have a PayPal account. You can just use a credit or a debit card. Sorry about that. Um, and I always let people know it does say transforming disabilities up top. That is us. Uh, it will say purpose the Watchman News donation. That way you know you're in the right place. So now that we got that out of the way, I can destroy all chances of anybody wanting to wanting to participate in that. <laughs> this is not going to be a subject that either liberals or conservatives are going to be in agreement with me in most cases. Um, it just, it's the way it is. I can't help that. I can't help what the cheerleaders pass down as talking points. I can't help that. What I can do is ignore all of them and look at the truth. Look at what is truly going on. So, first off, I do have a couple of little notes wrote down here. Um, because there were some very important points that I, I think really need to be said. Uh, first off, I want to say that during this uh, discussion that I am going to be talking a little bit about myself. Okay? I'm not doing that because I want acceptance. I'm not doing that because I'm seeking permission from people or sympathy or empathy or anything. Anything. What I want to show you is a little piece of one man's battle. Just one. Okay? Maybe you'll have a little bit of an understanding of what's happening to a lot of people. A lot of people in this country. But see, we're unaware of that. We're unaware of those struggles. Largely because we don't ask. And largely and more effectively because we don't care. That's where the problem is. We'll get into that. One of the things that I see going on is people feel squeezed. They feel cornered. Every direction they go, they're cornered. They can't move. And it's a matter of either society and their whacked out rules or government and their treacherous laws. People can't move. People absolutely cannot move. I've talked about it before many times in jest, but it's a fact. In my teenage years and beyond a little bit, in my early 20s, uh, some of the individuals, well, most of the individuals I hung out with were, well, let's just say they weren't on any honor rolls, okay? That be it in school or life or anything like that. I was a partier, I was a pothead, hair halfway down to my ass, stoned about 90% of my waking hours, and I'm just trying to give you an idea of who I was and who I may have hung around with. The craziest individuals that I hung around with were those that were preacher's kids, cop's kids. And the absolute craziest one was a judge's kid. And they were fun. I'm telling you, they were a ball to hang with. Well, considering that was my kind of lifestyle back then. Today they'd probably annoy the hell out of me. But you have to understand there was a reason for that. There was a reason for that. Um, first off, I, well, not first off by now, but another thing I want to mention is that we have to have an understanding that safety and security is an illusion, nothing more. Nothing more. It's an illusion. It's like the word trust. It's an illusion. It really, truly is. Sure, you may trust your significant other, but does that 100% mean that they're not cheating on you? See? So therefore, trust is an illusion. 
That's just the way it is. We have to be careful of these words because sometimes we give these words more power than they really have. Safety and security is absolutely an illusion. You see, we're sitting here in our living room right now, okay? And for the size town that we have, we have a pretty decent-sized police force. It's, we've got, in my opinion, too many. However, if somebody were to walk off that street right now with the intention of causing either or both of us harm, there is only... Two people sitting in this living room that can do a damn thing about it. And that would be Jen and myself. So the idea that a government can provide you security and safety is an absolute illusion. They may be able to do it on some level from another nation on some level, but from individuals, no. It would have to be martial law and you would have to have cops within arm's length of each other on every sidewalk in every city and every state to be able to actually say that the government can secure us, they can make us safe. And that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. None of the, or I should say, all of the surveillance in the world isn't going to prevent people. All of the thought crimes in the world isn't going to prevent people. It's, it's an illusion. So we really have to be able to rely on ourselves for our own safety and our own security. It is truly our responsibility and nobody else's. And we need to have that understanding. I, I consider it a grown-up discussion, right? Because you absolutely could not be a grown-up if you think that your life can be saved by picking up a phone when you've got somebody charging your door with intent on doing you harm. That's silly and immature. Another thing that is silly and immature, and I know the left is probably going to think I'm attacking here them. Give me a break. I'll get on the right here in a moment. But I see a lot of people blaming Trump out there. A lot of people blaming Trump. Trump did not do this. Trump did not have anything to do with this. Not whatsoever. People are saying that he promotes hate and all of that. No. Trump's just not an apologist. And he doesn't think that we should have to be apologists. And I agree with him. We shouldn't have to be apologists. If we did no wrong, why the hell should we be apologizing for people that we ne never knew or not even in their generation or, hell, in most cases, their damn century? That's ridiculous. And there is nothing wrong with having that understanding. So, just saying... Well, it's Trump's fault. Bogus. Bogus. Just like saying it's the gun's fault, just like saying it's video games' fault, just like it's movies' fault. All of these things play a part. Don't get me wrong. The violent video games, the violent movies, and all of this stuff, yeah, they play a part. They desensitize people. They definitely play a part. Are they the cause? Hell no. Hell no. I haven't played a video game or a movie yet that made me snap or want to snap and go out and commit some kind of a rampage. So at very most, they could possibly desensitize people. I don't think it has that effect on 
on everybody. Certainly doesn't have an, that effect on me. And I, I like playing Battlefield. So we have to be realistic. What happens if we're not realistic about this? We don't solve the problem. We simply do not solve the problem. The anger that these individuals are feeling in many cases is justified. Their actions are not. Let me make that clear. But their anger is. Their anger is. Anytime there's protests that turn into looting and rioting, I bring up the fact that burning down Little Caesars or 7-Eleven is not doing anything to help the cause. Not whatsoever. Many of these protests are being held and, and you know, unfortunately, because unarmed people get shot down, gunned down like a dog in the street. And then they have to run through the dog and pony show of handcuffing a, a dead individual and letting them, making sure that they bleed out, making sure that the the mortuary don't have to even drain blood out of them because it all went down the storm drain on the street. Graphic? Yes. Truthful? Yes. That's how ridiculous it is. But, burning down Little Caesars or 7-Eleven is not going to address the problem in any way, shape, or form. There are other buildings that could be burnt down that would more address the problem, but they don't get touched. I'm not endorsing that, by the way. Not whatsoever. What I'm trying to say is that the, the anger is misplaced. The anger is misplaced. Now, with the individual that was involved in the El Paso shooting, I don't know what his issue was. I really don't. He was clearly, clearly a disturbed individual. His anger was not justified. And you have those instances as well. His anger absolutely was not justified. Not in any way. You're going to have those instances. You're going to have those cases. But it's not the cause of a president. It's not the cause of a video game or a TV show. A lot of times it truly is the, the cause of a, a mental issue. You, you have to be mentally out there to do something like that. But there is an anger issue in this country, and it's justified. Absolutely justified. Most individuals, such as myself, don't lash out with it. It's a shame that we have to put up with the things that we have to put up in this country. And it can be fixed. But that anger, whenever it's time, has to be directed in the right place at the right time in the right way. One of the ways that I deal with my life is right here. Right here on this show. Sometimes I need to vent. Sometimes I use the monologue for that very purpose. And it's it's helpful. It's truly helpful. 
But I'm telling you now that my life would be a hell of a lot better without society's crap, without the government's crap, a hell of a lot better. Let me give you some examples of that. Um, I said I was going to go into my life a little bit, and most of you know some parts of it. I haven't seen my children since 2014. And I did nothing wrong to cause that. Nothing. I'm not saying I did nothing wrong in my marriage. I'm saying I did nothing wrong that would constitute me not being able to see my children since 2014. The only thing that I did against my ex-wife was have an affair. But that's not why she pulled what she pulled. Has nothing to do with that. However, the facts are still the facts. I haven't seen my children since 2014. I did absolutely nothing that would dictate that to happen. I'm in pretty bad need of some medical care. Those that know me personally know that I've got some medical issues that are demanding. They need attention. I've mentioned it on the show before that I do suffer from PTSD, a pretty severe case of it. And while I really don't seek medical attention for that, there are other things I do. I've got some pretty serious physical health. Um, of course, I've got moderate, well, they say I've got moderate COPD. I think it goes further than that. I do think I've got some, some rather serious heart issues. I've said it before many times on the show, and I'm not exaggerating. I've got two and a half teeth in my head. And that ain't because they've been pulled or, or fell out. And no, I'm not a meth head. Not into that kind of crap. I've just got bad teeth. Had bad teeth all of my life. My my mouth is way, way too small for my teeth. Dentist told me as a child that I never had a chance of even saving my teeth. And here we are, at the age of 47, two and a half teeth in my head. And not a damn thing I can do about it. Would I, for all intents and purposes, be considered disabled? Absolutely. I couldn't carry 30 pounds across the room without having to grab my inhaler or at least sit down and take a good two minutes, three minutes to be able to catch my breath. It's just a way of life now. I deal with incredible joint pain every single day. Thankfully, thank God for Kratom because it does help a lot. A lot. One of my absolute favorite foods is steak and I can't eat it because I don't have the teeth. These are all things that I would love to address. And in fact, if I could address these things and at least get my health in the right direction, I'd probably go back to a 9-to-5 job. Because I would bring in more money. 
and better take care of Jen and myself. But there ain't no way in hell that I'm able to go back to work in this condition. I have applied for disability one time. Swallowed my pride the best I could. Fought off the PTSD as much as I could. Went to their two million doctor's appointments. And like everybody else, was denied. By the time I went through that process, I felt so humiliated and so embarrassed. And every day, still, hear people talking about other individuals that receive help like they're some kind of trash. There is no way, no way, I could go through that again. Absolutely not. I'll live in a fucking ditch before I give somebody the the ability to say that I just want to milk the system. I busted my ass for most of my life. Run my body literally, literally into the ground working my ass off. Again, I'm not looking for sympathy, empathy. I'm not looking for acceptance. I'm not looking for a damn thing. All I'm trying to do is maybe bring a little light to what the hell is going on in people's psyche. So I do everything I can to try to bring in what I can to help us make it through. Fortunately, over the years, I've built up many different skills that allow me to do many different things that I can bring in a little bit to be able to do that. Not everybody's that lucky. Believe me, I thank God every single day for my skills. I couldn't go work for somebody doing the same things that I do here at home because guess what? I don't have that damn piece of paper to put on the wall that says I know how to do it regardless if I'm doing it day in and day out every single day. I don't have some stupid piece of paper that says I know how to do it which is what an employer would require. Silly, huh? Now, if I want that piece of paper, I can push myself and go get that piece of paper if I want to put myself in a lifetime of debt. That's the deal. That's the deal. That's my choices. A lifetime of debt, never be able to catch up and really make it anywhere just so you can have a piece of paper that says you know how to do something that you already know how to do. No thanks. No thanks. People are getting squeezed so hard. And the only reason I'm telling you some of this stuff is so you understand that I'm speaking from experience. I'm speaking from this position. I get it. The old saying holds true. When people have nothing left to lose, they lose it. That's a fact. So maybe the answer is, and this isn't going to help all cases. Again, I really don't understand the mindset of the El Paso shooter. I have no idea. No motive has came out yet on the Dayton shooter, which I do want to say something real quick. I, I forgot to say this. Um, first off, absolutely our condolences. And I know it's oversaid 
but our thoughts and prayers to everyone affected. And I know it's oversaid. But this you might want to mark on the calendar because it's not often for this to come out of my mouth. I want to commend the police officers in Dayton, Ohio for an outstanding response and an outstanding job. That was remarkable. Many, many, many lives were saved because of the outstanding job that they did. That is an undisputable fact. So, I think the answer lies within ourselves. And you've heard me say this many, many, many times over. If we want to fix these problems, if we want to fix this country, it starts in our homes, in our own minds, and in our own hearts. Maybe, just maybe, if we stop making individuals feel like they're worthless, it will have an effect. In fact, I know it will have an effect. Again, you have some individuals that are just whatever. They're just Looney Tunes. The guy that shot up El Paso Walmart would fit under that category. I mean, to have that much hatred for a particular nationality or race or religion or anything, to go in and just indiscriminately shoot up. Nah, that's, that's, there's some deep, deep-rooted mental issues there. Which, by the way, we aren't going to be able to predict. We aren't going to be able to thought crime. We aren't going to be able to do any of that. The only thing that we can do is stop demonizing guns. Is stop making it hard for individuals to own firearms. in hopes that maybe more individuals are carrying them. What happened in Dayton, Ohio, is a case in point. Those police officers were very close by, and in very short order, neutralized the subject. We, the people, can do that same thing if we are allowed to. The answer is not banning guns. The answer is not more background checks. The answer is not all of these talking points that you're handed. The answer lies in if we have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all, for one and truly honoring the Second Amendment by removing not just some, but absolutely all gun laws. All. You know, it's very frustrating for me because I am not a violent person. I am not a violent-minded person. I don't like violence. And I will do what I can to avoid a fight. Never been charged with any kind of violent crime in my life. But I cannot own a firearm. Because at the age of 19, I got charged with a felony. And my rights have been forever taken. It's extremely frustrating. 
because that's telling me that my life is not worthy enough for me to be able to defend. And that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And yeah, I could sit there, I could get attorneys, and we could go to the state, I could have my record expunged, and God knows how many thousands of dollars later, I could get back my unalienable right that government wasn't allowed to give me nor take away from me. How, how stupid does that sound? It's crazy. It's it's absolutely crazy. This is one of the problems I'm talking about. The government. The government overreach. You give it enough time and we'll have to pay a tax or a fee or a permit to fart. Between society and government, we cannot breathe. And as I said in the very beginning of the show when I was talking about the, you know, the people I hung out with in my younger days, the reason why they were so crazy was because of how restrictive their parents were. And that is exactly why you have school shooters and stuff like that going on today. Because these kids can't dot each other's eye and get it over with because of the repercussions of that. So they let that anger build and build and build. And the next thing you know, they show up to school with a gun and wreak havoc. Because the responsibility of being able to take care of their problems has been taken from them by the government. If you cage somebody, if you treat somebody like an animal for long enough, I guarantee you they are going to act like an animal. That is a basic human fact. One of the reasons I respect Jen so much is because, I'll tell you what, you try to hold her back. You try to hold her back. You'll find out that her spirit animal is a honey badger. Real quick. Real damn quick. And that's one of the reasons I have so much respect for her. It's because of that fire that's inside of her. There is no caging her. Plain and simple. And I have respect for that. Nothing but respect for that. But that is also a part of human nature. If you, respect, if you restrict a human being enough, eventually they will lash out. That is a fact. There are a lot of factors playing into this. A lot. A whole lot. I think there's medications that play a factor. I, I, I do think that the media and all of that, I do think that it has an effect. And a whole bunch of factors. There's not any one thing that you could put your finger on and say, that's it. But it damn straight isn't an in inanimate object. It's not a president. It's not any of these talking points that either the left or the right will allow you to speak on. The problem is a lot more complex than that. And the answer, at least a good part of it, we can solve ourselves by getting off of everybody's asses. Maybe not 
treating everybody like they're trash on the Internet. You know, that was one of the things that Trump talked about today. You know, that pro-Second Amendment president that's once again wanting to enact more gun legislation. And this time, he's wanting to pair it up with the immigration bill. How do you like them apples? You want, you want the immigration laws? You're going to have to accept more gun control. How do you like that? Are we winning yet? Because I sure the hell can't see how we're winning. He's been the biggest anti-gun president since Clinton. And his trumpeteers are eating it up and making excuses. I've seen it today, multiple times. Oh, no, he's just doing that because he knows that he'll die in the Senate and win, win. No. Apparently, you didn't see how he planned on getting it passed through. You know, he's a deal maker. By going after individuals that speak out on social media, and I'm one of them, by saying that we should go after those individuals and kidnap them or remove their rights to be able to defend themselves, That's just saying that we are no longer allowed to have our thought, our own thought. I wrote this earlier. I said, by saying we should go after the people that indicate they are having issues on social media, it's saying that we should let the government and society put their boots down on their neck even harder without any accountability or repercussions. What would have happened if the founders of this country mentioned their thoughts on social media? Trump would have red flagged their asses. You better believe it. What would our current government have done to the founders of this country? Don't fall for their games, folks. Don't fall for their games. Don't stick to the talking points that they hand you. Think. Think for yourself. If we don't start doing that, we're done for. We're done for. I want to see an end to the violence too. Not just on our homeland, but across the world. Yeah, I would love to see world peace. It would be great. Is it going to happen? No. That's the realism of it. And it doesn't matter what you ban. It doesn't matter what laws you pass. It doesn't matter what kind of surveillance you use. You are not going to end the violence in this world not possible not possible but we can minimize it by allowing people to be able to easily protect themselves that would help a lot If a would-be assailant realized that he wouldn't have soft targets, that right there is going to prevent a lot of would-be assailants. That alone. Why do you think most mass shooters pick gun-free zones? It's 
soft targets. We've really got to change our way of thinking in this country on a social aspect, on a self-preservation aspect, We wanted to get better, and I truly think that most all of us wanted to get better. I truly believe that. I don't think there's any of us with our right mind that approves of what happened. But we have to take accountability for ourselves. That much we can do. We don't need a big daddy government to say it's okay or to pass laws to, to make it okay or any we can do that right now today right this second we can take accountability for ourselves we can watch how we respond to other individuals and yeah likely you're not going to get the same in return but if we consistently do it. You know, just like uh, Eric Holder was talking about brainwashing people into being anti-gun. We can quote-unquote brainwash people into not being douche canoes. Because that's how we're going to fix the violence problem. Not by banning guns. You get rid of the guns, they're going to use knives. They're going to use swords. They'll use whatever is at their disposal. Cain use a rock. Are we going to ban rocks? You should see the amount of people that are killed by hands and feet in the FBI crime statistics. What are we going to do? Ban hands and feet? We have to be realistic with this and we have to be adults. And we have to stop letting the discussion become a matter of what we can take away from another individual or what law we can pass to infringe on their rights. How about we let people, as I keep saying, let people defend themselves? How about we allow people to be accountable for their actions when they commit the actions? How about that? I bet you there would be a lot less child predators out there if these children's parents were allowed to deal with the problem themselves. But it seems like everybody, both left and right, want to run to the government to ask daddy for permission or daddy do this for me. It's the biggest entitlement society I've ever seen. And when I say that, I'm not meaning a damn thing about welfare. I'm talking about mindset. And it's both on the left and the right. Both... Both sides want government to take care of every little thing, regardless of where you get your money from. That is not what our forefathers intended. The founders of this country realized that with freedom came responsibility and accountability. And if you give up, that accountability and that responsibility, you will no longer be free because somebody will take that up for you. And that is exactly what has happened, what is continuing to happen, and what is worsening day by day.
And the more people that get pushed in that corner and not let up by both society and government, the more people you're going to see lash out and the more innocent people are going to die. The fault is not guns. Solely the fault is not video games, TV shows, It's how people are being treated and the conditions in which they're forced to live without anybody giving a damn as long as they've got their piece of the pie that they want. And again, that's not speaking to people that are just completely whacked out like the El Paso shooter. I'd I can't even begin to think of what in the hell could go through somebody's mind to be that way. Anyway, I could talk about this for days. I could, and still not get half of what's in my head out of my mouth. But I think you get a idea of which direction I'm going. It's not a discussion that anybody else is having because it's not a talking point that's handed down by the cheerleaders. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. That's why I don't watch TV, folks. I do not need anything telling me what to think. Anyway, let's run through some headlines and uh, we'll go from there. I'll try to make this quick. I'll try to just zip through them as quick as possible. Just remember, I I gave you a little piece of, of the crap and I mean I gave you a little piece of the crap that I'm dealing with myself. A tiny piece of it. There's a hell of a lot more than that. And I'm not looking for sympathy, empathy, acceptance, anything. I'm not looking for anything. I want you to understand that I am one individual and there are many of us that just have an unbelievable, overwhelming amount of crap that we deal with on a day-by-day basis. Chances are each and every one of you are another one of those human beings. The last thing that any one of us needs is a government up our ass or a a society down our throats telling us how we're doing everything wrong and this and that and this is how they would do it. Who gives a fuck? Seven and a half billion people on this planet. What in the hell makes one person's opinion more important than everybody else's? That's something we have to understand in this country. And the more people we come down on, the more people we tell how they need to live their life and what they need to do is another line of bullshit that that individual don't need. And we live in a society of those kinds of people. One of the notes I had wrote down here was, uh, let's see. Oh, I'm trying to pull it up. People expect perfection for every, from everyone, but it's perfection as they see it. That was one of the notes that I had wrote down. We expect everybody to be perfect, but perfect in their way. It's kind of like the whole freedom thing, right? Everybody says they want freedom, right? But then they want to restrict the rights of others that disagree with them. That's not freedom. Society is a little bit warped. Anyway, let's do some headlines. Let me have a sip of coffee here. Nobody should ever be ashamed to just try to live life, to just try to survive. Nobody. 
Nobody. We need to stop being a society that's so hell-bent on stepping down on people. It's getting nobody nowhere. Uh, let's see. Monopoly, what monopoly? And this, by the way, is from Saturday. Facebook to consolidate empire by branding Instagram and WhatsApp. Uh, White House polls press pass from CNN contributor. He vows to fight. Uh, voice assistant companies abandon snooping practices after being found out. And if you believe that, I've got a bunch of bridges to sell. Just uh, get with me. A $32 million nothing burger Justice, Justice Department bill comes due for Russiagate costs. Uh, Iran to make third step in scaling down commitments under 2015 nuclear deal. Uh, hidden crime of the U.S. food market, why your kid's cocoa likely has a whiff of child slavery. It's, uh, you know, that's true with so many things, folks. So many, so many things. If we were truly against child labor... Truly, truly against it, we would never buy our cell phones, our televisions, and our clothing, and most everything we own. That's just a fact. If we were truly against these things, we wouldn't allow these companies, these corporations, to import these items that are made by child labor, made by slavery style of wages, with people that are living in just unsightly conditions. We wouldn't do it. But alas, we're in a society that don't care. We like a good deal though, right? Apple suspends Siri program that allows employees to listen in on users' private conversations. Mm-hmm. Sure you did. Sooner rather than later, U.S. seeks to deploy mid-range missiles to Asia as it ditches INF Treaty. And this is crazy. How many times now in the past several months have I said those words about the U.S. ditching the INF Treaty? They did that months ago. But we're still talking about it as if, like every move they make, it's like, oh yeah, they just ditched it. They just done away with it. They done away with it months ago. Uh, light oil set to flood global market. Um, hang on, let me. Well, we'll we'll catch that on the rebound. Um, we'll catch that on the replay. There's right now. There's a uh, a press conference on the El Paso shooting. So after the monologue, I'll uh, I'll pull that up. Uh, military deploys air tankers and helicopters to, com to combat devastating wildfires in Siberia. Uh, history in the making, North Korea to host South Korea in Pyongyang World Cup qualifier. A school cop arrested for trapping his neighbor's cats and killing them in a cemetery. Uh, multiple casualties in Walmart mass shooting in El Paso, Texas, says reports. I'll tell you what, all these that have to do with the shootings, I'm not going to read them because you guys already know that. Uh, let's see. And there's going to be several of them. There's, there's just no, no purpose of me repeating what you already know. Iran seizes foreign oil tanker in Persian Gulf. We're on Sunday, by the way, yesterday. A uh, 6.2 magnitude quake hits off Japan's Fukushima. Uh, that would be the Dayton shooting. Uh, good deal. I don't know if they're still uh, available or not, but I will pass it your way if they are. Let's see. Oh, no, I'm sorry. They are all sold out, every last one of them. Uh, 511 had tactical bags, tactical bags on sale at Woot.com. For really, really good prices. Really good prices. Uh, so I tweeted that out and put it out on Facebook and whatnot over the weekend. So uh, Washington urges Australia to be partner in confronting Iran and Gulf standoff. Uh, pure pleasure. Frenchman successfully flies across English Channel on hoverboard. 
Uh, let's see. Oh, I I will mention this. Um, they kept saying in the beginning in the Dayton shooting that the uh, the guy used a Kalashnikov type rifle, and it actually turned out to be the AR platform. Um, it seemed really strange that they were really pushing the idea that it was a Kalashnikov rifle, almost like they had an agenda. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Iranian media releases video allegedly showing IRGC capturing foreign oil tanker. Hang on. Like I said, there's a lot of them. Iraq denies ownership of oil tankers seized in Persian Gulf by Iran. A magnitude 5.2 earthquake hits southwestern Iran. Uh, let's see here. Hong Kong Airport it cancels 100 flights amid ongoing protests. Okay, now we're from, or we're at this morning here. And again, I'm not going to repeat all the stuff you already know. Trade deal with Canada distorts competition. Protesting French farmers tell RT. Uh, Russia undermines U.S. dollar dominance by shifting trade to local currencies. Uh, U.S. President Trump... Oh, never mind. That was about, uh, about the same stuff there. Huawei likely to replace Google's Android with own mobile operating system this year. Uh, Putin says U.S. quitting INF created fundamental risks for all and paved way for unrestrained arms race. Uh, fracking, cracking, oil price correction triggers U.S. shale meltdown. Uh, let's see. Locals and soldiers suffer burns and shrapnel wounds after artillery depot explodes in Siberia. Uh, global stock markets crash as U.S. trade war with China escalates. Uh, and Google seeks to meddle in 2020 elections to derail Trump, says a former employee. But I'll tell you what, they don't have to try hard to do that. Because I think today, uh, he derailed himself quite well. I'll tell you what, I know a lot of Trumpsters, a lot of Trump trained people, and my goodness... Yeah, they um, they are not happy campers today. He has lost a lot of support just today alone. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. One thing you have to understand is, you know, he's, again, he's a businessman. He believes in the deal, right? And I don't think he's dumb. I don't think he's dumb. And he may push away some of the really strong Second Amendment supporters, some of his, you know, some of his base. But how many on the left is he going to pick up if he pushes gun control? That's the question that you need to ask. What's the trade-off? What's the trade-off? Anyway, that is the uh, headlines. I'm going to go ahead and close up the monologue. Uh, for those here for the live show, stick around. Don't go anywhere. Don't do anything. We'll be live till 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. For those just here for the monologue or watching the recording thereof, thank you very much. As always, God bless you. We love you. And be one with your spirit.